If it's true that the difference between science and screwing around is writing it down, then we're in big trouble. No, I'm just kidding. We have plenty of data written down. Today we're going to be loading up 350 Legend. If you have missed the previous video where I talked about what I think 350 Legend is and how it kind of fits into the market and what sort of folks might be interested in it, go check out that video. I'll put a link around here somewhere. But today we're actually going to start loading up these cartridges. Now I've already done this a bunch, so I kind of have some ideas of the techniques that need to go into this. This is a little bit of a strange case, especially when it comes to the brass because you're going to need to use some of the techniques that you normally do when you're loading up a pistol or handgun cartridge like 357 Magnum or uh, you know, 38 Special, 9mm. This is a little bit different though because it also includes some of the techniques that you need for shaping a bottleneck cartridge. This is not a straight uh, walled cartridge. I mean, it is straight walled, but it isn't a cylinder. It's actually a, on a taper. And so this is going to require a little bit of extra work. Let's dive in, but first I want you to see what tools we're working with here today. One of the most important tools on my bench are my vernier calipers, and these inexpensive Frankfurt ones have worked just fine over the years. I have liked these a lot. I have, however, finally made the upgrade to install the, uh, the lock and load bullet comparator from Hornady. I've gotten lots of complaints in the past, people wondering why in the world I'm still measuring from the base of my case out to the tip of my bullet when I'm getting my overall lengths that I should be measuring to where the ogive begins. And I do agree, but here's the, uh, the big secret. It's not that big a deal. If you want to be able to measure out to the tip of the bullet, you're still going to get great information. Yes, it can vary a little bit, but as long as you kind of average out some of those lengths, it still does work and I've gotten good results. If you want to get even better results though, yes, I absolutely agree, this is going to do the job. So I do have this installed today. Some of the things that we'll be working with, we have Hodgdon H110 Magnum Pistol Powder. This is one that's well known for use in 357 Magnum, 44 Magnum, 454 Casul, some of those big heavy Magnum rounds. And we're going to be combining these with small rifle primers from Winchester. These are not the magnums, these are regular. Now for case prep, this is where things start to get weird. These cases, yes they are straight wall, but these have a taper to them. These are not cylindrical cases, and I was really hoping that they would be, uh, and that it wouldn't take a whole lot of work to be able to shape these cases. Unfortunately, you do have to lube these up and go through those extra steps. So what I've done is, instead of using the, uh, the old lube pad like I used to, I'm using Hornady One Shot Case Lube. All you have to do is just give a spray uh, from two different angles on these, making sure you get the angles just right, and then you just let it sit for a minute, and then we can reshape these, which is what we're gonna do now. The dies that we're using come from Lee. This is the Pace Setter die set, and it comes with absolutely everything, including a shell holder. The only thing that it's missing is a crimp die if you want to use one of these, because a lot of the bullets that we're going to be messing with have a cantaloupe, and you can put a crimp on them to help seat them. A lot of time if you're dealing with heavier bullets and heavier recoil, uh, you want to kind of lock these bullets into place inside the case so that they aren't being pushed back and uh, possibly causing some high pressure situations. However, in especially this cartridge, 350 Legend, I'm going to try to avoid crimp if I can just because uh, it can cause some problems. Now this is the only crimp die that I would want to use in 350 Legend. This is a collet style and you can kind of choose how much you apply and it applies pretty equally across its whole surface. The roll crimp dies are causing some problems where uh, you kind of get the case mouth jamming up into the throat in the chamber and that can cause some overpressure and some really bad issues. I'll link to a video that shows that off. But uh, yeah, if, if I do want to apply crimp, that's the one. If step one is to full length resize the brass, step zero would have been that lube application and then step negative one would have been to pick the right brass to begin with. This Starline brass is incredibly precise as I showed in a previous video which I'll link to here. I have measured 350 Legend and 458 SOCOM brass from Starline to find that uh, the, their lengths are incredibly precise. They are all under the, uh, the spec as they need to be but within a very close tolerance. 
Their weights are also very close to each other with extremely small standard deviations of mass. Make sure you check that video out. Length on 350 Legend is very important because remember that this all head space is off the case mouth. There is no bottleneck shoulder to bump up against. There is no uh, external rim sticking out. There's no belt, nothing. It's all based on this right here. So if this gets too long, it can actually jam up inside the throat and pinch the bullet, creating overpressure. If this gets too short, then you can stretch the brass in the chamber under firing, creating a case head separation, which none of us want. The press that we're using today is the RCBS Rock Chucker Supreme, which is a giant magnum press. This can handle anything up to 50 BMG. Make sure you check out the video that I've done on this where I show its installation and some of the features on this. Uh, this is a little bit of a weird installation. You'll want to see how I did it. But yeah, we'll just run it up into the full length sizer die. This uh, press is a toggle over center model, so when I push it all the way up, I need to push it just a little bit further to get that kind of cam over. That's going to get me a little extra torque. And you can set your die up the way that you want it. If you don't want that toggle over center, you can kind of skip it on this one, but I think in this case it's probably a fine idea. At this point we need to measure our lengths to make sure that we're not getting too long. As long as it's under that 1.710 then we're fine and we certainly are. So this is looking just fine. We don't have to trim this. If we did want to I would use the RCBS uh, Trim Pro 2, which I have over here. This is one that you can use to trim like everything that you have. It just comes with the pilots back there. Whatever case you have, uh, this can probably take care of it and you can get those all trimmed up. In this case, we don't have to, which is nice. Uh, but what we do need to do is clean this up. The lube that's on the outside and on the inside of the case uh, can get a little bit sticky. I know that all of these case lube manufacturers will tell us that it's not actually going to hurt anything, that it's not going to cause the powder to stop working, but uh, I just don't like to put anything on my case. You know, if I'm going to load up a magazine, I don't want anything that can attract debris. Uh, this, this lube could possibly, you know, pick up sand and dirt and all that and make it stick to the case, and I certainly don't want that. So, time to chuck it into the tumbler. After just a few minutes in the tumbler, the brass is clean and ready to be primed. Take a look at my primer pocket. This is all nice and shiny. This is brand new brass. If you want to clean up your primer pocket for more precise ignition, and just to make sure that everything is uniform, you can use this guy right here, which I've been using for about a year or so. This is the RCBS Brass Boss. This is a wonderful little station that has multiple different tools. You have a chamfer, deburr, and then you have all kinds of primer pocket fixing tools. So this one will remove military crimp if you're dealing with that. You have a cleaner and a, a uniformer. So this can actually kind of cut into the brass and at least clean it up to make sure that everything is uniform and uh, nice and pretty. In my case though, all I need to do is prime this. And now we move on to a step that you rifle hand loaders may have never tried before. These straight wall cases work a little bit differently than your bottleneck brass, which usually has a little bit of a thicker neck, and you can just put a little chamfer on and very easily slide your bullet in there. These are pretty different. Those of us that load for handguns or lever guns know that we need to expand the case mouth just a little bit to make sure that the bullet actually seats in there. This is the expander die right here. And what you do is you back this off, and I'm going to run my case up into the die. Okay, so I've got it totally topped out. As I start to screw this in, eventually I will feel it make pretty solid contact with the case mouth. Okay, that's it right there. That's my spot. That's where it's first making contact. What I want to do is flare the case mouth enough that it can seat a bullet very neatly, and I should be able to just, you know, kind of push the bullet down inside a little bit but I don't want to flare it out so much that I'm overworking my brass. I don't want to have a huge opening that I have to kind of close back up each time I reload this. I want this brass to last as long as possible. I've already figured out my spot. You'll have to figure out yours, but you just kind of turn this in by increments until you get uh, the right depth for you. So when I push, I'm going to feel a little bit of tension. I can kind of feel some of the friction in there. And here is what we're looking at. 
I'm gonna zoom in so you can see the case mouth just a little bit. You can probably see some streaks in there, uh, some kind of dark and light streaks. So that's showing where I have gone in and uh, kind of flared things out a little bit. This should seat a bullet very neatly now. Remember that we can deal with two different diameters, 355 and 357. The 355s, in general, they might just seat without much of any flare at all. You might not actually need anything. And this is a 147 grain TMJ from Spear that we're using. It's a, a wonderful bullet, and this is gonna be a fun one for plinking around at the range but we're also going to be seating some 357s today and I want to make sure that when I push them inside that they just fit very neatly and I'm not uh, getting into any issues where I'm going to be crushing the brass because I actually did that a little earlier. I didn't have quite enough flare with the on the 357s and I totally squished some brass. But yeah, this is going to fit nicely. A couple of notes about the expander die. This does include a funnel up here at the top, so you can actually, once you've done your expanding, you can just leave it at the top, dump in your powder, and it'll fill the case. This, however, has some lube on the inside to begin with, so you need to clean this out, otherwise the powder is gonna stick all inside here and make a great big mess. Don't ask me how I know. This funnel is removable, so if you have one of the attachable uh, kind of powder hoppers, like say you're using one of these progressive presses, and you want to be able to just automatically dump in the powder, you can do that. It'll fit inside there. Also, if you have these Lee funnels, these will stick neatly in the top of that funnel so you can uh, get your powder dispensed a little bit more easily in there without having to make a shot at this small aperture. I'm going to be measuring my powder using the RCBS Charge Master Lite previously reviewed. I'll put a link to that in the description below. Uh, this is a, a less expensive model than the old 1500 and a bunch of the others out on the market, but this makes precise powder measurement very easy. 26.3 grains of powder. Now it's time for the bullet seating die, which performs two functions. You'll remember that we flared the case mouth, which means that it's actually out of spec right now. It's a little bit too wide. We want to have the case squeeze around the bullet to give it good neck tension and make sure that that bullet doesn't drift around under recoil. And then we also want to make sure that this will fit very nicely in the chamber. We need to get this back down to spec, and that's part of the job of this. This is kind of a job of feeling it out. You're going to have to turn this in until it meets the spot uh, that you think works. And you're going to be using your calipers to figure out uh, what your case mouth uh, should actually be. I already have my spot figured out here. And then this up here is going to be for your proper bullet seating. So what I'm going to do to start out with is just back this off a whole bunch to make sure that I'm not pushing the bullet too far in there because I can continue to work it in, but once I get so far, I don't want to have to pull the bullet back out again. So here I go, I've got my 147 grain TMJ. I can push it very easily into the mouth of the case. And then, all right, I could feel it barely make contact. So I can definitely start to, oh no, there we go. There's contact. As I turn this in, I can feel that it, it finally touches the bullet there. So I can back this off and start screwing this down and see what kind of uh, dimension that I have here and start to push this back little by little until I hit my match. Here are my dimensions. I'm going to put my formula for this particular load. I'm not afraid to put the, uh, the load data on this one. I'll put my recipe on the screen for you guys so you can see what I've been doing. This one is so mild that I'm not concerned about putting the load data out. Nothing edgy about this at all. As you start working in your bullet, this is where you have a choice of measuring from the, uh, the base back here to the nose, to the very tip, using your vernier calipers, or if you do have one of these, you can be a little bit more precise than that. So I'm looking for 1.810, and I'm just gonna keep turning this cedar stem in until, until I get exactly what I'm after. A couple of notes on the Lee Collet Crimp die. 
this is the one that you're going to want to use, like I mentioned earlier, just because of the way that it works. Remember that Headspace with 350 Legend is based on the case mouth. It's going to bump up against a little shoulder inside the chamber, and that's how it's going to sit inside there. If you crimp too much, you can actually slide past that point and jam up the bullet inside there. And that's some of the stuff that was found out by Eagle Eye Shooting. There was actually some factory ammo that was crimped a little too hard, and so it was actually pushing up into the throat, squeezing the bullet, creating uh, some pretty big overpressure and causing problems like case head separations, blown primers. Uh, so whatever that was, it did not work. This one can. Just remember that you don't have much tolerance to work with. If you do put a crimp on there, you're probably going to have to break out those calipers and make sure that you're not going to slide past that little shoulder in there. Get just enough that it's going to grab the bullet, give you some decent tension. Don't do it so much that you can actually ruin things. Now we're moving on to 357 diameter. We're adding another two thousandths to that diameter. This is going to have a little bit more neck tension and this is a little bit of a heavier bullet. So we're looking at a 158 grain spear deep curl. And you can see that these have a gigantic meplat. And here's where we start to get into some issues. If you have a bolt gun, this will probably work. Uh, whatever kind of magazine you have, as long as it isn't butting up against the front of the mag, uh, I think that these will probably seat okay for you. If you have the AR, unfortunately these don't work. I had to hand load each of these. Uh, kind of in from the side in order to get them to uh, to feed in there. Uh, these just would not feed in an AR. So sorry about that. We'll continue to look at different projectiles to see if we can get some that have a bit more of a point to them. I have some uh, 125 grainers from Remington that I think will do the trick, some soft points. But yeah, these will not feed. Uh, one other thing to note, since this does have a little bit of a higher diameter, it gets into higher pressures a little bit more quickly. So if you are working in quick load or you know some other way to kind of figure out what kind of powder charge you need, back off just a little bit because I know that the max charge that I got from quick load was a little bit too high. I got up toward that ninth shot and I was noticing some pressure signs, so I backed off. And uh, what we have is this recipe that you see here on the screen. Since this is a new cartridge, a lot of this you kind of have to figure out on your own. And in quick load, I was trying to figure out what kind of depth I wanted on all these bullets. If you are going to concoct your own recipes, uh, there are a couple different ways that you could do this. But what I wanted to do was get at least one bullet diameter's depth inside the case. And that's what we have here. This is 355 thousandths deep. And then the cantalure on these bullets is also exactly one uh, bullet width deep as well. So I just seated right up to the edge of that. I was expecting 350 Legend to be simpler to load up. As you can see, it's actually one of the more complicated ones out there because you have to treat it simultaneously like it's a straight wall cartridge, you know, a la pistol, and you have to kind of treat it like a bottleneck as well. So yeah, this takes a lot of steps to get it to where it is. But once you do have some of these cooked up, it's pretty well worth it. These are really fun to shoot, as we're going to discuss in you know kind of the final review and some of the other tests we're going to do with this. Uh, I think this is going to be a very solid performer out, out at the range, just having fun. But then also when it comes time to uh, do a little hog hunting, I think this one's going to work really well. It's all going to depend on bullet type, and we're going to continue to work up some of the uh, the projectiles in here and see how we can kind of couple a really good flight through the air with a really solid hit on gel. I want to be able to mess up whatever animal that I hit with this. Thanks a lot for watching, you guys. Make sure that you like, share, subscribe, and especially hit the notification bell because YouTube doesn't want this content getting out to you guys. The notification bell is probably your best shot at actually seeing what's going on around here. Thank you to everybody that has made this project possible. Uh, Spear donated the bullets. Thanks a lot. Starline donated the excellent brass. And of course we have the patrons of the Destructive Arts that have kept the lights on and kept the cameras rolling for years now. Uh, you guys rock. And if anybody else wants to chip in a buck or two a month to keep these lights on, keep these cameras rolling, and you know, kind of keep some of this content coming out, I'll put a link to Patreon. Thank you especially to patrons of the Destructive Arts. Uh, on the 338 Lapua Magnum level, we have Sportsman's Guide and Stan and Mary. And then we have Joseph Davies and uh, Joseph Davis and Peter at the 300 Win Mag level. I'll see everybody around. Thanks for watching. 
If you liked this video, be sure to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Even if you didn't like this particular content, go ahead and subscribe. There's probably something coming that's more up your alley. Check out this playlist right here. This is going to have videos in a similar vein to what you just watched. These two videos we cherry picked for you. And finally, The Social Regressive is on Patreon. So you can become a patron of the destructive arts and earn some goodies while helping us to provide high quality videos just by kicking us a few bucks a month. Thanks a bunch for your patronage.